Alright guys, we're going to talk about uh, a little bit about intestines. <clears throat> We've already looked at part of the small intestine. Okay, this is the duodenum of the small intestine. Remember, that's the first part. Food's going to come from the stomach and enter the duodenum through the uh, pyloric sphincter. If we look inside the duodenum, we can see that there are these folds in the wall of the duodenum. These are called pleca circularis. And these pleca circularis is one reason why the digestive system has such a large surface area for absorbing uh, nutrients from food. So these folds are pleca circularis. The whole thing is a duodenum. And the duodenal papilla, which we kind of already talked about, that's where your bile duct, common bile duct, and your main pancreatic duct empty into the duodenum. <coughs> Looking farther down, the small intestine. Alrighty, looking at the intestine, of course, you know, we, we started out with the duodenum. We already saw that on the other model. And the duodenum is going to enter here. So food's going to come out of the duodenum and enter into the jejunum. So this would be the beginning of the jejunum. It's going to go through the jejunum into the ileum, which is this last portion here. Then it'll go through a valve going into the large intestine, and we'll look more closely at that in a second. But this is the il this would be the ileocecal valve. This part of the large intestine, or the colon, is called the cecum. It's kind of like a blind pouch. And off the back of the cecum, you find the appendix, kind of folded up behind the cecum. And this is the ascending colon, transverse colon, descending colon, descending colon goes into a portion of, called the sigmoid colon and then into the rectum. <laughs> if we look at this model here, we can see the duodenum right here starting the jejunum. Most of the jejunum has been removed so it would sit on top of this structure. This part right here is showing you the very last inch of the ileum and its entrance into the large intestine right here through this uh, ileocecal valve. So this would be that valve between the ileum and the cecum. Here's the cecum, ascending colon, transverse colon, descending colon, sigmoid colon, and rectum. Here's your appendix on this one, little green structure. And this yellow structure right here is actually your greater omentum. And you can see that on this one as well. So this is all jejunum, here's greater omentum. Cecum, ascending colon, transverse colon, descending colon. You can also see the greater omentum on this model. Now we'll look at the large intestine in a little bit more detail. We already talked about the appendix. Okay, that's going to hang off the cecum. You can see it there. You can see it here. You can see it here. Okay, so here's the cecum, here's the appendix. The ascending colon, when it turns to become transverse colon here, makes a bend, and that bend is called the hepatic flexure. When it gets over here before it becomes descending colon, it makes another bend, and that's called the splenic flexure because it's next to the spleen. And we can see those really nicely here. <coughs> okay, this is actually the right side. This is the left. So this is the hepatic flexure and this is the splenic flexure. So make sure you know whether you're looking at the back or the front. The front you're always going to have your omentum. A couple other things about the large intestine. It has these bumps. Okay, The small intestine has pleca circularis. The large intestine has haustra. And that's the bumps here. Also, the large intestine, instead of having the continuous layer of longitudinal muscles, those uh, outer longitudinal muscles, 
the large intestine has them consolidated into three bands of muscle that go along the large intestine and those are called tinea coli. You can see one band here, you can see a band here, and a band here. You can see them up here. Okay. On some models they'll be white, like on this one, you can see a white band. That's your tinea coli. On this model they're gray. Hard to see on video probably, but this line right here is the tinea coli. And you can see them here. That's only on the large intestine, but you'll have it all the way down. <coughs> this part right here is called the anus. And I think this is the best model that has it, this gray one. Not all of them have it. Some of the torsos do. Okay, and then um, this part, just this portion right here is the rectum. This S-shaped portion is the sigmoid colon. And this is the rectum. You also have something hanging off of the large intestine. Not only will it be covered in greater omentum, there and there, but you also have hanging right off of the sides of the large intestine, you have these little fat blobs. Okay, and these little fat blobs are called epiploic appendages. <coughs> all of this connective tissue in here between the pieces of the colon, where all these vessels are, is called mesocolon. The connective tissue in between the small intestine, which isn't as easy to see on most of these models, is called mesentery. And we can see mesentery very well on the cadaver. the mesentery and the mesocolon protect all of those blood vessels in there. 